Rob Gronkowski officially announces his retirement, and Dominican Sue closes the door on the Buccaneers. And could this trade with an AFC team mutually benefit both sides? Let's go. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. We thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or view every day. I am James Jericho, joined by my Sun Devil Proud co-host, Mr. David Harrison. David, covering your Tampa Bay Buccaneers for Sports Illustrated's BucksGameDay.com. I'm over at SB Nation's BucksNation.com, and both of us are on Twitter. Of course, the show at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at D Harrison82. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Bucks listeners, you get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings. Use the code Locked On at checkout at BlueNile.com. And thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or your first view every single day. Rob Gronkowski, James, retiring from the NFL, from the NFL, the game of football. And a lot of speculation about this leading up to this moment. Um, but I have upon good assumed sources and information that he did not want to lose a jersey bet with Rashad White when Arizona State puts a whooping on the Wildcats this year. This is why. Rob Gronkowski retired. Of course, Rob made his own statement. So from the man himself, uh, this is this is his statement upon retiring via Instagram. Quote, in college, I was asked to write about a dream job opportunity that I wanted to pursue and where the location would be. Every time I had to write about my future, no matter what, I picked being a professional football player. For that assignment, though, we had to pick the location. So I wrote that I wanted to play in Tampa for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for many reasons, the sunny weather being number one. I completely forgot about writing this report until two years ago when I had the opportunity to join the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And let me tell you, the journey in Tampa over the last two years has blown away what I originally wrote about in college, big time. And for this, I want to thank the whole entire first class Buccaneers organization for an amazing ride, trusting me to come back to play and help build a championship team. I will now be going back into my retirement home, walking away from football again with my head held high, knowing I gave it everything I had, good or bad, every time I stepped out on the field. The friendships and relationships I have made will last forever, and I appreciate every single one of my teammates and coaches for giving everything they had as well. From retirement, back to football, and winning another championship, and now back to chilling out, Thank you to all Buccaneers fans, the crew without you guys. None of this is possible. All of you brought it every game. Thank you for all you do. Cheers to what's next. Maybe sailing the seas. Arg. End quote. Uh, Gronk just texted me. He said he doesn't even know who Rashad White is. And so that bet was. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah. So all, all joking aside, now that James Jericho is going to pretend he can be professional for a minute. Um, Listen, this is the complete opposite of what we've been saying all off season, right? Like we, yeah. we have yeah. been saying Gronk is coming back. Like we had this, this feeling that Gronk was coming back. He was obviously staying in shape. You saw the Tampa Bay lightning hype video uh, and all those, he had the guns out and all that stuff. And, and, you know, you just, you just felt like it was just one of those things where Gronk probably about, you know, July 10th or 12th, uh, or something like that would sign his contract and, and report for training camp and then and, and things would get rolling after that. Now you were more steadfast throughout True. in your belief that Gronk was coming back because if yes. you you know if, if some of our listeners go back or some of our listeners may remember, I started wavering. Uh, my right. confidence level was dipping and dipping and dipping. Then you were right about the Brady thing, and I was like, all right, you know what? Maybe I'm being too cynical. That's just my nature. Uh, so I, I started to just kind of assume that Gronk was going to be there again. I should have stuck to my guns. 
uh, and and continued to dwindle my belief that Gronk was coming back because then I would have been right this time. All of that. Of course, said, that is important here. All of that said, Tom Brady retired for 40 days. Yep. And we saw that barbershop video where he said he was going to make Brady sweat it out a little bit and uh, make him wait because Brady made him wait. All I'm saying is that 40 days from now is like just barely under two weeks before the season actually starts. So much like you refuse to actually close the door on Tom Brady being retired yep. or, or Brady coming back, however you want to phrase it. I'm not fully convinced we've seen the last of Gronk in Tampa Bay. Maybe we're talking about like November. Yeah. Maybe we're talking about December. Uh, but I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave it open just a smidge because I do think there's a very small outside chance, especially if you see injury issues like we saw last year, that Brady's gonna be able to say, "Look, big guy, I need you. Can you can you give me three months?" Can you give yeah. me three months to go win another Lombardi and then we can both be done and we'll be neighbors and we'll be besties and uh, I'll name my dog after you. <laughs> yeah. And, and listen, uh, Drew Rosenhaus, you know, uh, Gronk's Gronk's attor or attorney uh, agent actually texted, I believe it was Adam Schefter that he texted and said that he wouldn't be surprised. Drew wouldn't be surprised if Tom Brady came calling uh, mid season, late in the regular season here this year. Uh, came calling and Gronk decided to get back on the field. So his own agent not closing the door. Of course, his agent has a lot of reasons um, to to want Gronk to come back and to play again. Uh, but he also mentioned maybe even next season. So, you know, by then, I don't know, Tom Brady will be a New York Jet or something by that time. Um, so Whoa. Gronk, either way, probably not coming back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit of a surprising development. But I will say, a little peek behind the curtain, Buccaneers players only make retirement decisions, James, when I'm driving because... <laughs> Tom Brady retired while I was driving. Tom Brady unretired while I was driving. And then Gronk retired while I was driving. So as long as I don't drive anywhere, um, no other Buccaneers will retire. So we're officially opening a GoFundMe to pay for all of my Ubers yeah. so that I never have to drive ever, ever again. Of course, now the Buccaneers have to serious. I mean, they've already kind of right been seriously. I mean, they've been working OTAs, mini camps, all stuff without Gronk. So they're already, quote unquote, preparing uh, to for life after Gronk, but the Buccaneers could still turn to the free agent market to replace, you know, uh, we'll, we'll say that word roster spot wise, Rob Gronkowski and the Buccaneers also appear to be without another member of the Super Bowl 55 winning team moving forward. But before we talk about those things, let's hear from two friends of the show, including Tyler from Boston. What's up, boys? Tyler from Boston. I uh, just want to shout out Rob Gronkowski and wish him happy trails and a heartfelt thank you for being a part of this team for the last couple of years. You know, although I'm, you know, been living up here, you know, I'm in an original Floridian. I have rooted for the Bucks for a long time, but, you know, since I've lived up here in New England, I've witnessed a talent that was so extraordinary and a personality that was so um, captivating to go with it. And, you know, just want to wish him the best. And uh, I think this is the, if it's the best move for him, then I'm happy with that. And I will support him 100%. Uh, still going to root for the Bucks, and I hope Gronk will too in his Leonard Fournette jersey. But uh, yeah, happy trails to Gronk. Go Bucks! Today's episode of the Locked On Bucks podcast is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever increasing numbers of makes and models of vehicles, it's literally impossible for your local chain auto parts store or your local dealership to stock all the parts you're going to ever need. Why go to the store, go to the dealership while the person behind the counter orders you the parts that just happen to be on their computer because that's what their warehouse is? happens to carry and said you can get what you want when you want it by going to rockauto.com and you can save time and money while doing it why would you spend 30 50 even 100 percent more for the same parts at that chain store or car dealership than what you can get it for rockauto.com a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years with prices that are reliably low for all customers go to their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto parts need go to rockauto.com right now see all the parts available for your car or truck Right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? We know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Thanks for making Locked On Bucks podcast your first listen or your first view every single day. One live NBA draft show is not enough for Locked On. The entire NBA channel is going live 
on NBA Draft Night. So if you have a favorite NBA team, make sure you subscribe now to their Locks on YouTube channel so you get notified when they go live on NBA Draft Night. Speaking of young basketball players, who do you Jimmy think Graham people? used to be a young basketball player. What was that? Who do you think the Seattle Supersonics are going to draft? Um, I think they're going to draft that, that kid from the, the school where they have the basketball players coming up. What about the Vancouver Grizzlies? Never went also, also will draft a player from a school that has a basketball program. That's my prediction. I'm sticking to it. Um, you're not going to knock me off that pedestal. Jimmy Graham once played basketball, James. He did. He was also right. once a much, much younger, younger basketball player at a university that I will not talk trash about right now. Um, Jimmy Graham last year. So uh, Scott Reynolds of pewterreport.com did the heavy lifting for me here. James actually looked up some tight ends on his own. I did not. I went to pewterreport.com and pulled up Scott Reynolds list. So Scott Reynolds had Jimmy Graham as one of the potential veteran tight ends. Last year, he played with the Bears. Graham posted a career low 14 catches for 167 yards and three touchdowns. James, Jimmy Graham has not been good since he was playing with the Cheaters to the northwest of Tampa, the New Orleans Saints. What do you think about Jimmy Graham potentially joining the Buccaneers? I feel like Jimmy Graham has been in the NFL since 1997. Now, I know it that's not like true, that. but it that's what it feels like. It feels like he was a backup to like Jay Novacek. In like when Calvary. Joey Galloway was a Seahawk. Yeah. Jimmy like, Graham was somehow playing football for the Saints. Jimmy Graham's been in the NFL since there was only like 28 teams. Uh, no, I do not like the idea of Jimmy Graham. That is a terrible idea. Uh, that helps nobody, uh, including Tom Brady or the Buccaneers. Um, and Jimmy Graham. It would definitely help Jimmy Graham, but no, it's not going it to help. help Jimmy Graham. <laughs> uh, somebody else that, that Scott mentioned was Kyle Rudolph. And uh, Rudolph, you know, he's he's another big name, but the play has been declining. Uh, mm -hmm. He is a good blocking tight end. Last year with New York, he only had 26 receptions for 257 yards and a touchdown. This is not the Kyle Rudolph of old uh, because it's the Kyle Rudolph that is old. So, David, your thoughts on uh, Kyle the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Pretty sure Kyle Rudolph once caught a game-winning pass from Brett Favre. Um, and I know these are all veterans, but that's a little too veteran for me. I, wa I want at least a little bit of, of grease still on the wheels. Um, turning to the next name, Jared Cook. Last year played for the uh, Chargers on a $5.5 million deal. Caught 48 pass for 564 yards and four TDs. That's pretty good production, actually, for, for a guy like Jared Cook. Um, not my favorite name on this list, but definitely the production I think is worth looking at. I think Jared's probably the first name we come to that I think you can take with some seriousness. It's not great to have a tight end who's best known for fumbling a football in the divisional round at home against a division rival. Uh, thank you, Antoine Woodfield Jr. Moving on, uh, Eric Ebron, who is probably my favorite name on this list. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ebron has been in Pittsburgh the last couple of years, and he's he was overdrafted. He hasn't lived up to that to that hype, but he signed a two year deal with the Steelers. Caught fifty six passes for five hundred fifty eight yards and five touchdowns in twenty twenty, but then only twelve passes for eighty four yards and one touchdown last year. Granted, the Steelers offense kind of stunk last year, so I'm not going to hold that against Ebron. He right. was extremely productive in 2020. I feel he could be really, really productive, uh, being the complement to Brate and Cade Otten, uh, you know, for the Buccaneers in 2022. So I wouldn't hate this, and you're probably going to get him on the cheap because he's still floating out there at the end of June, yeah. uh, and he would know that he would have the opportunity to compete for a championship. Your thoughts on Ebron? Ebron is my favorite name on this list, too, from a current day perspective. Um, I, I like him for all the same reasons you just said there, and I agree with you. Like Pittsburgh Steelers offense, uh, outside of throwing to just really fast, long, you know, big catch radius type of uh, receivers, really hasn't been able to do much. Ben Roethlisberger, uh, the good, you know, on-field version of Ben Roethlisberger, uh, has long been retired, and, and the, the broken down, uh, out of gas, Ben Roethlisberger just retired. So um, I agree. I think Ebron still has some things, you know, to to produce. You know, you're not expecting first round draft pick, uh, you know, production. But again, you just mentioned Kate Otten. 
you have Cam Brate. You're not looking for Eric Ebron to come in and be your tight end number one. That's going to be Cam Brate. You're looking for a guy that can come in and either perform a little while and produce enough to let Cade Otten get up to speed or just be a rotational player with Cade uh, as soon as he gets on the field. So, yeah, Ebron, my favorite player on this list as well. Next one, Blake Jarwin. Uh, Scott Reynolds notes that Jarwin has the least amount of experience and also the least amount of production. He is a former Dallas Cowboy tight end who did not stick. And if there's one thing the Dallas Cowboys do pretty well is actually find decent to good tight ends. The fact that Blake Jarwin didn't last there very long just kind of shows why I don't like him for the Buccaneers. I love Blake Jarwin. Love Blake Jarwin. I would actually yeah, and I knew you would. super stoked. Uh, if the Buccaneers sign him, look, he has the least amount of experience and the least amount of production because he has been hit with the injury bug. He got injured in week one of the 2020 season in the first quarter and missed the whole season. Oh. Dude lost an entire year. His leg actually fell off on the 24 yard line. They had to reattach it. Um, no, Blake Jarwin has tremendous upside. He would be dirt cheap. He could actually be a massive steal if he can stay healthy. And again, when you're not looking for one of these guys to be your tight end one, you can take that risk. You can, you know, give him a chance to be the tight end that he's shown flashes that he can be and just hope that he's able to stay healthy. Maybe, you know, when you're controlling the playing time and, and things like that a little bit more, you're going to be able to prevent some of those injuries, hopefully, but I love Blake Jarwin. The last one that I wanted to throw out there was Jesse James. And this name popped off and you're thinking, Jesse James, he was good like three years ago. Yeah, he was good three years ago, but then he went to Detroit where careers go to die. And then he went to Chicago where more careers go to die. So with the Pittsburgh Steelers over the course of three years, he was incredibly effective. He had 39 receptions, 20 of which went for first downs and three touchdowns. Then in 2017, 43 receptions, again, 20 for first downs, three for touchdowns. Then in 2018, 30 receptions, 17 for first downs and one touchdown. He's not your tight end one, but he is effective. He will move the sticks, and he played really well on a high-powered Pittsburgh Steelers offense before he went to go play with the Lions and the Bears. Oh, my. Yeah, I mean, the Lions, you know, they had Matt Stafford, and I like Matt Stafford for obvious reasons that we've talked about in the past on this show that we don't need to rehash now, but hard to produce when it's you, Noah Fant, and nobody else. Like, that's that's really difficult to do. And then Chicago Bears, quarterback situation, we're not even going to talk about that. I like Jesse James. I remember he was he's the Pat Fryer Mo Fryer Muth. Fryer Muth. Fryer Muth. Or Pat Fryer Muth was Pat Fryer Muth. I thought I could say his name. Um, so those are some options. You know what I mean? Obviously, the Buccaneers are, are keeping their eyes out there. We'll see if they make a move uh, before training camp. If they don't, I mean, it really kind of speaks to the health of Kate Otten, and maybe uh, he's a little bit further along than everybody expected. But uh, another move that is probably not going to happen, but some people have actually started asking, could it happen now that Rob Gronkowski is not coming back? And Dominican Sue, the return, Akeem Hicks pretty much killed our hopes. Hopefully, maybe we're wrong again. But Dominic Sue recently aired or appeared rather on ESPN's NFL Live as a guest analyst this week uh, and said, quote, it looks like the Bucks are out of the picture. James, what do you think about Dominic Sue and the Buccaneers being over? It's disappointing, but it's not unexpected, right? We talked about it as soon as Akeem Hicks was signed, that this probably means that Sue is done with the Buccaneers. You know, it's been a fun three years with Dominic and Sue. Yeah. There's talk of him possibly going to the Raiders, possibly going to the Chargers. Basically, looks like he's going to end up in the AFC West. So best of luck to him. But you know, he was. It was a move that you and I were both a little trepidatious about mm -hmm. when it was announced because we had some preconceived notions. And I have to say, Dominic and Sue blew all of those out of the water. Uh, he was a lot of fun to watch. He was a lot of fun to cover, and just seemed like a genuinely great teammate. So. Thanks for for some great years in Tampa and congratulations on your Super Bowl. Yeah, Sue's been great for the Bucks and, and you know wish him wish him all the all the luck. Uh, the Rams are another team potentially reuniting with the Los Angeles Rams. But look, something that we talked about a long time or along this story was what that we thought the hangup was probably money, specifically probably guarantees. And multiple times during that conversation, the the uh, the money situation 
uh, came up when he was talking about the Chargers, the Raiders, the Rams, whoever it was. Uh, money came up with Indomitian and Soup. Not by any means calling him greedy. The man has earned the right to to be a little bit choosy, so I, I don't begrudge him that at all. But it, to me, it just kind of seems to confirm that money was probably the hang-up here between the Bucks and Indomitian and Soup. All right. Well, there was a hypothetical trade thrown out there involving the Buccaneers that could be mutually beneficial. But first, you know how our friends at Built are always coming out with new amazing flavors. Well, this time, Built has truly outdone themselves with their new mud pie flavor. And for the first time ever, Built is introducing the new mud pie flavor in both mud pie bar and mud pie puff. And if you're not sure what mud pie tastes like, well, if you are a chocolate fan, then prepare yourself because the new Mud Pie Bar is rich whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate, then topped with a cookies and cream crumble. You have got to try Mud Pie as soon as possible, and you need to make it as soon as possible because Mud Pie Bar and Puff are only available, available for a limited time. Visit Built.com to taste the deliciousness yourself. And if you're not convinced, we save the best for last. All Built products are low calorie, high protein, and low sugar. Mud Pie is packed with 16 grams of protein, 150 calories, 8 grams of sugar. So it's great tasting and it's good for you. What's great about Built is that all their bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. Chocolate mousse, whipped cream, cookies and cream crumble. Stop drooling. Get to Built.com and order your box of mud pie bars and puffs right now. You will not regret it. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 and you're going to get 15% off your order. Again, promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Wrapping things up here on a Wednesday edition of Locked On at Bucks podcast. Bleacher Reports, Ian Wharton has proposed a trade for the Buccaneers that could help them acquire some depth on the defensive side of the ball while helping out former division rival Matt Ryan and his new squad. So Wharton proposed that the Buccaneers trade receiver Tyler Johnson to the Indianapolis Colts for defensive end Ben Banigou. Wharton says, quote, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have assembled a depth chart with eight roster-worthy receivers. Swapping one to take a flyer at another position only makes sense. The best candidate for an available edge rusher is Ben Banigou, end quote. That is what he said. And uh, I wrote it up for BucksGameDay.com questioning whether or not uh, the Buccaneers should move on from Tyler Johnson, uh, who is the receiver uh, mentioned again by Bleacher Report in this idea. But you know what? We're going to give our thoughts on this trade proposal. But before we did, I thought we'd hit up the guys over at Locked on Colts. So, uh, joining us now here with with his answer is Jake Arthur, one of the new hosts of the Locked on Colts podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Jake Arthur here. Uh, my partner, Zach Hicks, and I are the new co-hosts of the Locked on Colts podcast. I've been friends with David for quite a while now, so glad to hop on here and give my two cents on this proposed trade he wrote about on Bucks Game Day. Uh, that's Tampa wide receiver Tyler Johnson for Colts defensive end Ben Banigou. Uh, Banigou is probably always going to be one of those if he only got a real chance, guys, for me. Uh, he was drafted by the Colts in the second round in 2019, kind of one of those athletic ball of clay guys. And he has shown plenty of promise over these last few years, but it's really never translated into a consistent role uh, within the Colts defense. In 34 games over these three years, he has just two and a half sacks and three tackles for loss. So a lot of times stats don't lie. Those, those are not eye-popping by any means. Uh, specifically last summer, he really never looked better than in, in training camp. Uh, his speed, bend, explosion, all the things they drafted him for were on full display. But he just couldn't really carve out a role during the regular season still, despite being one of the studs of camp. Uh, there has been some talk about how he fit with former the former coaching staff uh, and Matt Eberflus. So that could be kind of a fresh slate thing under under the new staff with Gus Bradley. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to believe Bradley won't like what he see, sees, at least in the summer and, and training camp and, um, and the preseason. 
But regardless of how Banigou does look, he's got a lot to compete with behind Quidipe, Yannick Ngakwe, and Dio Odangbo at defensive end. Uh, the Colts also have a couple veterans in Taekwon Lewis and Ifiati Odenigbo, uh, but they're both on cheap deals, and they're not really necessarily locks for the roster. Uh, but I do think their versatility, the Colts could find plenty of, of value in both of those players. So it's going to be a tall task for Banigou to, to really carve out a spot on this roster. As for Johnson, as you guys know, he's been all right in two years. Uh, his production rose in year two from his rookie year in 2020, uh, but the efficiency did take a dip. Yards per catch, touchdowns, catch percentage were all down. Uh, that's a tough receiver room to be a part of also. Um, you know, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, everybody. So he could be expendable for the Buccaneers. Um, you know, there was also some talk about how he fit with Tom Brady or just not being on the same page. I don't see that being much different with Matt Ryan at quarterback. That's two very demanding veteran quarterbacks. They want you to be in the right place at the right time. Um, but, you know, that the Colts will do their due diligence in, in this scenario. Uh, the, the, for, the, for the Colts, Johnson would give them something they need, which is a little veteran depth and presence at a position where they really need it. Uh, behind Michael Pittman Jr., who is coming off his first 1,000-yard season, it's just kind of a bunch of players that have yet to prove themselves, uh, whether they're still really young, whether they're developing veterans, or they've just dealt with injuries throughout their career. Um, evaluating both players, money is kind of a wash. Banigou costs well, about $1.8 million with one year left on his deal, and Johnson is just over $2 million with two years left. Uh these are two players who may very well get cut at any time between this summer and week one. Uh, so making this swap for both teams is mutually beneficial. You know, I, I don't see why not. Thanks, guys. All right. So once again, that was the voice of Jake Arthur, one of the new hosts of the Locked on Colts podcast. So if you're a Colts fan or you know a Colts fan, uh, make sure you direct yourself or direct them to the all new Locked on Colts podcast. They will be launching very, very soon. Very excited to have Jake uh, on the network, of course. Uh, as he mentioned, we've known each other for quite a while. Haven't seen him physically since the 2019 NFL scouting combine. So need to make sure uh, we catch up when, I don't know, perhaps when I cover Washington traveling to Indianapolis for Carson Wentz's return uh, to Indianapolis. Excuse me. The Buccaneers and the Colts play in the final preseason game. In yeah, I will not be in Indianapolis for that game. I so, um, so you can meet Jake Arthur. My, my good friend, and I will hopefully see him again. Anyway, this <laughs> trade idea. So listen, um, Tyler John, like this, nothing against Tyler Johnson, right? But yeah. to the point of the Bleacher Report proposed trade, Jake just kind of talked about, we've talked about it. Mike Evans, Chris Scott, Russell Gage, Cyril Grayson, Rashad Perryman, Scotty Miller, uh, like you, Jalen Darden, you have got a, 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 a very deep wide receiver group here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So it's not outside the realm of possibility that they would look to potentially flip one of these guys for another player at a position of need. And when you look at the defensive end, or not the defensive end group, you look at the outside linebacker group, that's kind of what this, this trade is sparked by, is the belief that this, this player has been miscast. Right? You look at Noah Spence, and that's kind of mm -hmm. uh, what we're talking about here, and would fit better as an outside linebacker. So when you look at Joe Tryon, Shoinke, you look at Shaquille Barrett, Anthony Nelson behind him, you don't have a lot of other guys behind those three and Anthony Nelson. I mean, there are, I think there are people who are a little bit more sold on him than I am long-term. So adding another guy who maybe he just needs that position change. Maybe he just needs a little bit of different coaching. Either way, he obviously needs some life breathe back into his career. I don't think it would be a bad move necessarily. Again, unless the Buccaneers feel like Tyler Johnson, this is just going to be the year he blows the roof off the thing. Yeah, I, I, in this hypothetical situation, I wouldn't hate this trade either for all of the reasons that Jake said, all the reasons that you just said. You're you're getting the opportunity to create some depth at a position where you're a little bit thin, and by a little bit, I mean a lot of bit. I'm wondering if the Bucks are regretting not bringing back Jason Pierre-Paul at this stage. Um, but you have the opportunity of a guy who was drafted in the second round that could potentially revitalize his career and become – what he could have been as a second round pick by transitioning from the defensive line back to that outside linebacker style of, of edge rusher. And as for Tyler Johnson, like, look, this, this kid has a lot of potential, but he's not out there killing it. He's not out there lighting it up. 
and there's going to be even fewer opportunities for him when the Buccaneers sign Odell Beckham Jr. for the playoff run. So with that, David, we are going to get out of here. We'd like to thank you for making Locked On a Bucks your first listen every day. And the first picks of the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft have been made. Search now for the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft to get over 50 insiders, the Odyssey sports experts, the draft experts of Locked On NBA Big Board. The five-episode Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is underway. Make Ultimate NBA Mock Draft your second listen today. If you have reactions to the Gronk news, the Sioux news, this hypothetical trade, questions, thoughts, comments, dreams, desires, anything at all, go ahead and send those in via email to LockedOnBucksPodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail like our buddy Tyler from Boston at 813-444-5841. Check out all of David's work over at BucksGameDay.com. Check out mine over at BucksNation.com. And, of course, follow along on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JayArco underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, be good to one another, fire those cannons. We thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked on Bucks.